Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. A number of you have commented and questioned about using an external automatic antenna tuner with the 7100. There are a number of them available from ICOM and from several third-party suppliers, and hooking them up and using them with the 7100 is actually pretty simple, but there are a couple of key points that you need to keep in mind, so I thought it was about time that we did a video on it. So let's take a look at connecting a tuner and using it with the IC7100. Okay, we're going to take a look at tuner operation, external tuner operation, with the IC7100. The 7100 does not have a built-in tuner, so the only way that you're going to do any antenna tuning with it is with an external tuner. This is covered in Chapter 16 in the Advanced Manual. However, it's covered for the ICOM AH4 or the AT180 tuners. Now, frankly, any external tuner that's designed to work with ICOM radios will be very similar to the AH4 instructions. The AT180 is similar in operation, but it uses a different connector on the back of the radio. So let's take a look here. I've got an MFJ Model 939, and this one's actually called the 939i, which just means that it came with an accessory cable to hook up to ICOM radios. So we're going to use this tuner, and of course you're going to need the base unit, and then the only other things that you really need are the cable, and this is the one that comes with the tuner that connects to the tuner connector on the back. And you'll need a small jumper connector to connect between the tuner and the rig for the antenna connection. I've got a very short one here because I'm doing this on the table, so this will depend on how far apart you're going to have your tuner and radio. So let's take a look at connecting them up. It's really pretty simple. All right, I've got these turned around, and I've got the uh, remote and the power cables disconnected from the back. Let me get that more in frame for you. I've got the other cables disconnected from the back of the uh, 7100 right now, just for clarity. So all we're going to do is first we're going to connect the radio interface cable to the MFJ. Now this would be the same... If you have any made for ICOM tuner, LDG makes one, and of course there's the ICOM one, but you're going to connect your control cable to the back of the radio. On the MFJ, there's also a power jack here. If you're using the radio interface connector, this actually carries power to the tuner. This jack is if you're using the tuner with a radio that may not provide power. You can set it up for different brands or if you're just using it as a standalone tuner. So we're going to plug that in. The other end of the connector simply connects to the tuner connector on the back of the radio. It's just a four pin connector, so pretty straightforward. And then we're going to connect our jumper coax to the transmitter connection on the tuner. Okay, and you just connect the other side of that to the HF output, which is HF through 6 meters, on the back of the radio. And that's really it in terms of connections. Now, I there's also a ground connection on the tuner, and of course we have the ground connection on the radio which should be connected to your station ground whether you're doing this mobile or in your shack or wherever 
I'm going to connect those back up off camera and then I'll connect my power and my uh, remote head connector up off camera. And then we'll go take a look at how this operates. Okay, we've got everything connected up now. And one connection that is pretty obvious, but I failed to show you on the back side, of course, you need to have the antenna connected to the tuner. And then, of course, I've got my station ground connected here to both the uh, radio and to the tuner. So we're all connected up, and I've just got the display on top of the tuner, just so it's hopefully a little easier for you to see. Now, there's one very important feature or, I guess, step when you are using an external tuner with the 7100. And that is, in order for the 7100 to recognize an external tuner, the tuner has to be connected when the radio powers up. So on the MFJ tuner, there's a power button on the front here, and you need to turn that power button, press the power button in or turn the power on before you power up the rig. If the rig powers up and the tuner's not there, and then you power it up, the rig will not recognize that there's a tuner preg uh, pregnant. <laughs> Pardon me, that there is a tuner present. And then when you press the tuner button on the, or the tune button on the radio, nothing will happen. So let's see how this works. And I'm not sure if you could hear the clicking. There's some relays for the tuning in here. I'm going to turn this volume down. I've got the radio wired into the mixer, so for hearing some of the radio uh, static and, and button presses and so forth, and you should be able to hear that a little better. Okay, so the tuner operation honestly couldn't be simpler. There is a tune indication that'll be up here in the upper left-hand part of the display. I'm going to turn up my local volume a little, just so... I can find a clear spot um, and actually here let's go up even higher we'll go someplace uh, up where I don't think there's any activity for the moment all right so to tune the antenna or match the antenna all you have to do is press and hold the tuner button And, of course, if I was actually inside the 10-meter band, <laughs> that would have worked. Um, sorry, the 10-meter band doesn't go that high. There we go. That would be why there was nobody there. And there's not really anybody here either. All right. So we're on a pretty clear part here of 10 meters. I don't hear any signals out there. Now let's try that one more time. So I'm going to press and hold the tuner button for a second. There we go. And this tuned, it says it's tuned with the little LED on the front of this. And you see the tune indicator show up here in the upper left-hand part of the display. That's pretty much it. That's how you use an automatic tuner, or at least one that's made for it. Uh, MFJ makes several models that will work with uh, an ICOM radio. LDG makes several models that will work with an ICOM radio, and of course there's a couple of ICOM models uh, as well. So that's it for basic usage. You go to the frequency you want, and you push the tune button, and you're tuned. WA2IVD testing. Just to make sure we've identified on the frequency we're on. Now there are a couple of settings on the radio to set functions for the tuner and let me uh, turn the squelch up here we'll go to the set menu here so we're going to press set and let's see I'm all the way at the bottom so we'll go to menu 104 and you want to look for the function sub menu which is page 3 of 4 and then you're going to look for the tuner sub menu which is on page 3 of 7 on the function listings so we'll press tuner and you have three options here. The first option is auto start and auto start will automatically 
tune, it will automatically, the, the radio will send a tune sequence whether you push this button or not. If your frequency has changed by more than 1% or if your SWR is higher than some threshold, I think it's 1.5 to 1, and the radio will automatically initiate a tune se sequence while you're transmitting if that's turned on. The next one is push to talk start, and that's basically the same thing. When you key the mic button, if you have moved your frequency by more than 1% or the SWR is high, when you key the mic, the radio will automatically initiate a tune sequence. So if you're mobile, for example, and you don't want to be fiddling around trying to find buttons, if you have that turned on, then when you key the mic you can you can key the mic and it will automatically do a tune sequence and then you're tuned up on your new frequency so it saves you a little bit of button pushing this last menu option uh, tuner switch there's two choices manual auto this actually pertains specifically to the icom at180 tuner and if i'm understanding the manual correctly in auto mode, the tuner will automatically remember different frequencies that you've operated on and will automatically tune for those, For it'll go to the tune settings for those frequencies. If you put it in manual, then whenever you press the tuner switch, it will just retune for that frequency without remembering uh, what was set there before. So that actually specifically applies to the AT180, and I don't believe that it makes any difference what position that's in if you're using an aftermarket tuner. So those are those three settings, and the push-to-talk fu function is on, so we'll demonstrate that here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the bottom end of 10 meters. Actually, let's make that tune a little faster. So I'm down at the bottom end here. Let's make sure I don't have any. I don't hear anybody on around there. So I should have moved enough in frequency that just keying the mic, because the push to talk option was on, will initiate a tune sequence. And there we go. I, the red light here flashed. You may or may not have heard the relays clicking and you heard the tone on the radio. So what happens when this is tuning, just so you know, when it's doing a tune sequence, the radio automatically goes to CW mode. It doesn't change anything on the display. It goes to CW mode while it's tuning, and it puts out 10 watts. So it low, whatever the power setting you have, it ignores that, goes to 10 watts, sends uh, an indication to the tuner that it's got a carrier the tuner will will finish the tune sequence and then the radio will go back to whatever mode it was in so that's how it does the tune sequence it goes with a low power carrier and just puts out a constant carrier because if you just key the mic in sideband wa2 ivd testing notice you didn't hear any tone that time if i key the mic and there's no audio or no other signal, there really isn't going to be any carrier because in sideband mode, your radio doesn't put out any power unless there's audio. So it does automatically go into CW mode to do that tuning sequence for you. And that's really about it. As I said, the automatic tuner, external tuner operation really couldn't be simpler. And you have a whole variety of different tuners to pick from if you... Uh, want to be able to use uh, an, a multi-band antenna like a G5RV or a Wyndham or anything that requires a tuner, it's simple enough to do with this radio. That wraps up the basics of connecting and using an automatic antenna tuner. You can find the companion website for this channel at a to z.tech. You'll find a link to the website in the description for this video. The description also has information and links to some of the items discussed, as well as the manual pages that go with the topics we covered. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding the channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. You can also click on the little bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. As always, 
Thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.